Mikhail Sant is only 19 years old and he's already a self-made millionaire. How did he do it? I started a trucking company from scratch and in three months we did $159,000 in revenue. Mikhail started Sant Lines with just one truck that he bought for $32,000. Well, that truck right now is valued at over 89. Whoa. So the best freight for me that I haul, like my number one niche is reefer. When you find customers, they're really everywhere. Well, and I'm excited, if you don't mind, to take a spin on one of your trucks. Do you mind if we do that? How do I adjust the seat? I think like my main goal would be having like 10,000 trucks total. See, this guy's thinking big. Well, April, I had like 16 breakdowns between all my trucks. Whoa. My girlfriend kept saying, you need to start making TikToks, you'd go viral. And I did like three videos, 1.3 million views. And I was like, oh my That's gosh. Insane. Now, one year later, he's got five trucks in operation and two on back order costing a whopping $200,000 each. So let's go find out how he did it. You know what? I think I'm gonna drop the host thing on YouTube and uh, become a truck driver. All right, you guys, we're here at Mikhail's house. It's super early here in Pasco, Washington. I just texted him, he's waiting for us. Let's dive into the interview in terms of how he built this business. A 19 year old with a million dollar trucking company. Good to meet you, my hey, friend. Good to meet you. Well, hey. I, we're here at your house, right? Yeah, so pretty much here is where, you know, I started. Early last year, everything was still kind of shut down. So it was really nice because right. you could, you know, I had an office space in my house. And so I was able to just kind of run everything mobily. Yep. And, you know, a lot of people can do that. And a lot of people think, oh, it's really hard to start a business out of your house. And so, or you, you know, can't, but, yeah, but we're hey. here to prove that yeah. you can. Tell us uh, a little bit about your background, Mikhail, and why you got into the trucking business out of so all businesses. It's Possible. actually uh, it's actually quite funny. So I was in Texas uh, working, doing like moisture inspection, and my buddy he has a bunch of family in trucking, and he's like, hey man, you know you'd be really good in like logistics. And we were in Texas, and he's like, hey, you should look into it. Looked into it right as I got home from contracting. I was like, you know, numbers look good, a lot of opportunity in the industry, and I just I had cash sitting that I'd been saving up for my other business when I did landscaping, and I just sent it. Went to go looking for a truck, and just fell into place and met the right people, and. Happen like that. But dude, so, you're like 19, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so you can't talk a, a lot about experience of no, running a trucking business, yeah, right? No. So that's crazy. And that's I'm excited about sharing your story yeah. and inspire everybody else out there watching. Yeah. Tell us about your fleet. I know not all of it is yeah. here. You've got the 250, you got the 350, you know, and then you got these Freightliners. How do you decide on which trucks to buy yeah. for what freight? So What's the best? The best freight for me that I haul, like my number one niche is reefer. And so we're hauling 80,000 pounds. Really any s double rear axle, semi truck, three total axle will be mm -hmm. fine. So here's our Freightliner, our newest one on the fleet. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite trucks because of the engine is a Cat C12 and those are super, super reliable. Mm -hmm. Then here, right, here's my F-250, which we haul our flatbed with and our hot shot. So we haul anything from vehicles uh, to, like I said, sheet metal, piping, really anything it can, anything, anything you put that on I can here. put on a flatbed, we haul it. And so, yeah, and then uh, Freightliner is the one I like to go with. They're, they're cheaper trucks sometimes, <laughs> uh, but they, they're really reliable. Their parts are readily available. So whenever we need maintenance, these parts are just everywhere. Right, no back and order this anything. one has a brand new cat engine in it. So, and cat, engines are just phenomenal, especially the C12. What did C12. you pay for the engine? I actually or got it with the truck. Oh, so, nice. and I okay. actually got the truck originally, they were wanting 34,000, got it for 19,000. So, nice. brand That's new engine, everything. So, quite a steel deal. Yeah, I had to do the interior though, but you know, 2,000 into that, still save money. What should we budget for maintenance for say one truck? Uh, one Use truck, truck that you I'd like say to... save 20% honestly of your of your gross. Um, gross revenue, 20%? Yeah, just in a safety net account. All your gross re revenue, put 20% in your account, have a separate savings, whatever you gotta do. Make sure you just have that there ready because you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your safety net just covered because you have a breakdown where you need an engine, right. that's super expensive. So keep the 20% every time, yeah. right? Yep. Don't think, oh, there's no breakdown, yeah. let me just use it. Yep. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say keep it. Or if you know, you, you're pretty confident, that's your business decision. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you not to, but I would say, yeah, definitely keep that 20% handy. What are the significant costs of starting a trucking business? Insurance is number one. Luckily, I was able to avoid uh, high insurance costs because I had a really good agency backing me up. So finding a good agency once you buy your truck is the insurance. That's the most expensive thing you're going to buy all year. And so 
right now I probably spend a hundred thousand a year on insurance for Whoa. like four trucks and four trailers. Yeah. Okay. Four trucks and four trailers. But other startup costs is government fees. All in all, when you get all your business work, paperwork, your LLC, your actual documentation from the federal government, that's about I want to say fifteen hundred all in. That's Shop another change. Yeah. To, so yeah. exactly. Obviously, compared to your truck, you should be just having that money set aside anyway. So okay. I say those are the two biggest. And then of course diesel. You're gonna want to like a month's worth of fuel when you're starting in reserves because companies they actually some of them have quick pay options but a lot of them you're on like a payment 30 like a net 30 right. net 60 or whatever and you're not going to see that money for 30 to 60 days true then that's you know you're going to want that backup money why don't you show us inside this reefer and i yeah. want to ask you about scheduling you know your freight what systems you use and anything else you want to yeah. highlight on that so our dispatchers we use a camion they call it a tms oh i gotta <laughs> lock this up see? yeah so i was gonna leave oh, it open yeah yeah now i got you um, so we lock these up on the side always when loading because oh, yeah. you don't want the doors to get pinched and there's yeah. always just a little clip. But uh, I use a thing called the TMS. Camion is a really good one. So we can do all of our calendar work, scheduling, and practically everything in between. And it just, it, it works really well. So what does that cost you per month? It cost me $100 per month to, uh, that's not bad. to do that. And, it, and I can add up to uh, about... Yeah, it's moist. <laughs> I think I can have up to like 100 trucks on there managing, and then once you get to like another tier, they charge a little bit more and stuff like that. So you can pretty much do everything on there. What lands uh, trucks in the mechanic shops most often? What uh, are the issues? I'd say a lot of times it's just unaware maintenance problems, a lot of coolant lines, electrical issues is a big thing, as well as uh, cosmetics, people hitting things or stuff hitting your truck on the road. A lot of stuff hitting your hood or, or rocks kicking up and just knocking. You we go had a, for a mechanic for that? Yeah. I mean, no, no, there's times where uh, we had a rock fly up and damage our fan completely. Oh, ruined our engine oh you mean fan. the internal components? Yeah, yeah so yeah. there's times where that could happen or, you know, a lot of times is uh, definitely leaks. Leaks is a big thing. So I'd say definitely leaks, electrical, or uh, cosmetic damages. All right. So let's talk about CDL. You're 19. At what age can you get a CDL? And walk us through yeah. the process of getting one. Cost, time frame, sure. any tips on yeah. you know getting it faster than slower? I can only tell you about Idaho, Oregon, and Washington, really. Different um, across the other states. Because state. every state has different rules, but in every state you do have to be federally 18 years old to get an in-state license and a 21 if you want to cross state lines. And a lot of people wow. think you can only get a CDL if you're 21. I have my CDL. I got it last summer. Graduated CDL school in uh, August. But so. you can't cross I certain can't. states. Yeah, so I can't go across the Oregon border, can't go across the uh, Idaho border. I can only stay in Washington, but definitely uh, can still drive out here. Well, let's talk about costs. Where, where do I start to get a CDL yeah. and so, how long does it take? Uh, there's a lot of schools. Uh, I went to T Enterprises here in Pasco. Uh, that's about $4,500. I spent, it's about a month long is uh, how long it took me, but they have a night class. So if you work, you can go at night and that's mm -hmm. about a two month long process. Why did you get a CDL? Because you're in it to run a trucking business, not necessarily yeah. be a driver. Um, there's times where I've definitely needed to be a driver because of the fact that, hey, you know, you hire a driver, doesn't show up or something, or, you know, that, that stuff can happen. And there's been times where I'd go pick up loads for my drivers just so it's ready to go when I had time. And uh, do you think it's important? Like for somebody watching right now who wants to get into the trucking running business, I don't think it's what would you necessary, tell but I think it's very important and it's useful. You definitely want to know how to drive your own trucks too, that makes because sense. I've heard horror stories and I just don't want to be saying, oh, now I have to go find a random CDL driver to trust to bring my truck back where it is. If you had a driver that just quit on the job, that's a lot. Or Does that, that happen? I mean, tell us about some horror stories if, since we're switching gears here a little bit. I what? haven't had anything like that except for once. Uh, I hired a guy, the truck was, he went to pick up the load, no issues. It was time for actually taking the load. Uh, I wake up in the morning and the truck is still here. I'm like, uh, oh. no answer, no call, no show, no nothing. Dang. And so I ended up getting my other driver who was actually off for being sick, who just was like, hey, I'm ready to go kind of. So I just called him and said, hey, I know it's last minute. I'll pay you extra. I just need you to get here and take this load. He said, all right, got in the truck and left. How long did it take you to recoup the initial uh, investment that you made? I'd say it only took about a month and a half, two months, because uh, I already had my third truck by October, and I really started running my trucks in August. So August 23rd of 2021 was my first official date, mm -hmm. running a load, had all my driver set up, everything done, and pretty much, yeah, in uh, so October, you, I had my, my new truck already. A month and a half, you reached profitability, basically. You got your yeah. money back that you put in, started making profit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, as we spent more money, you know, got to build right. up more and more and more, but yeah, Scaling I'd say... It. I say so. We made our we made it money back the the month and a half, two months, and then uh, it just went from there. 
Tell us about your first truck purchase. What yeah. can we learn from that? What did you learn from that? The biggest thing I knew is the type of truck, uh, what it's hauled for, and also definitely the price. At the time, that was right before the market went crazy and soared. I was able to get my truck for 32,000. That truck right now is valued at over 89. Whoa. And so uh, I was I was the one who got the steal. And so originally the guy posted it for 45,000. I was kind of new and I was like, hey, there's always gotta be wiggle room. It was Facebook Marketplace. Right. And there's a bunch of trucks I went to go kind of look at and stuff. And there's nothing that really caught my eye, but this one was good looking, okay. so it was comfortable, had all the features, it was automatic, so it was gonna be easier if I did have to hire a new driver, because at the time there's all the talk about, oh, it's gonna be incredibly hard to find a driver, especially if you're a new company. And so we kind of were in touch uh, for about a month or so. It took about a month. He texts me, he's like, hey buddy, have you thought of you know buying, buying the truck? And I was like, I have, but I think that price is a little too high, what you're asking for. And I said, uh, would you take 30,000? He's like, let me talk to my wife. So that's a little too low. I said, I'll do $32,000 and I'll buy it like today when I'm done flying here. And then I kind of pulled the, shoot him lower than what I originally offered, then brought right. it back to my offer and it worked so he was like hey and me and him are still friends today so nice and actually for the two new semis i ordered i'm buying them from him because he got his order slots in super oh, early oh, all right so and it's not that easy for anyone to just come in and get no, the slot right no when you want to buy a new truck it's actually sometimes dealerships are even selective right. when you see a 19 year old walk in hey i want to order a new truck i don't even get a call back man so i was able to negotiate with him and uh, as soon as they come in i'm going to take them off of his hands and then so he's buying them yeah but you've then, committed to, to take buy them, them from, from his hands yeah. did you have to pay him something as a deposit that way he knows uh, you're committed? Yeah, just a $2,000 uh, deposit just to say, hey, here's good faith that, you know, I'll buy Refundable, it. not refundable? Yeah, yeah, refundable. So, Got me it. and him have a pretty good relationship, so. So, besides trucks themselves, like, what other supplies or equipment is important to have, let's say, with just one truck? I mean, yeah. what comes to mind? I know there's a whole ton of stuff, but. Equipment you're going to want to have is all maintenance stuff. I keep oil on deck. I keep straps on deck. I have pretty much as many parts as I can get for preventative maintenance, I'll stock. Because mm -hmm. for me, I've noticed whenever I need something, it's not in stock. So what I what I recommend is definitely keeping oil on board filters and whatnot. And when you have that all stocked up, you're gonna be just fine because you're gonna have enough material whenever you're gonna need to do your oil changes. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're not gonna do any major uh, repairs on the road, obviously, no, right? How no. does that work? You break down, what happens? So I have a few uh, roadside mechanics wherever I go, I save contact numbers. So I got one out in Olympia and Centralia in Washington. I got one in Bakersfield, California, Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Texas so I kind of just keep uh, keep my mechanics that are road guys there because when you're on the road and it's at night and you got a guys with flat tire even they come in handy you know and we've right. had coolant leaks where we have just a line burst and that just happens you can't it's How unpredictable often? I mean does it happen very often like I want to say depends on the quality in April I did so April I had like 16 breakdowns between all my trucks Whoa. and not That's a lot major not major um, one truck was eight between the truck and the reefer because I spent over, I think, nine or $10,000 on stuff that should have been fixed the first time, mm -hmm. but they ended up fixing everything that wasn't the problem. It was a very stressful, uh, stressful month, but we got through it, and now I think we've been breakdown free for three months, so. Nice. Are we gonna see your mechanic today? Sadly, we can't, but let's go to the parts store. All right, let's do it. Ah. Let's talk about customers. Like, yeah. as a trucking business, where do you find customers per se. I think it sounds a little different in your yeah. field of line, line of work, yeah, right? Yeah, so customers is really interesting because when you find customers, they're really everywhere. Anybody that needs freight hold, you can usually bag as a customer and mm. it sounds a lot more easy than it is. So what I do is I'll go actually make cold calls and I'll just start calling people that need trucks and they end up you know, doing that. But a big thing is word of mouth. I'll go to the truck stores, I leave my business cards, I mm -hmm. give them to people. They say, hey, I know a guy who has a truck. And then I go online, I do advertise on Facebook and Instagram for uh, towing and hauling vehicles and that's a big big thing too how as much well. do you spend on advertising per month i actually spend nothing on advertising so, so everything Facebook, is Instagram, just Instagram free and tiktok so all of those are just good tiktok has been good for finding drivers actually i'm doing some recruiting on there and i actually am in the process of possibly interviewing three guys off just tiktok just because so. they follow you on tiktok yeah. Yeah. What are you doing on TikTok? I haven't seen your channel because I don't have TikTok's yeah. channel, but. So TikTok, I do a lot of informative, how to, I did, made a video how to start a trucking company, so better check that out. And then another one I made is just like a different different things from starting and growing. And then also how I touch base on how to get your authority, your LLC, how insurance works. Um, just everything people need yeah. to know. Interesting, I, it's I, all I, trucking related, yeah. right? Yeah, mostly. I have a few other videos of me flying planes and stuff, so. Nice. Yeah. Do you fly a plane? Yeah, yeah, private pilot. You have a private yeah. pilot's license? Yeah. At 19? Yeah, 17 I got it. Oh, 18. That's freaking cool. <laughs> Are you guys looking for ways to improve your memory and focus? 
Do you want to conquer every day while improving yourself one step at a time? Entrepreneurship needs human optimization because you are the one making all these important decisions. So you need more mental memory than everybody else around you. Our sponsor today is Onnit and they are ready to help you on your self-improvement journey. They've sold over a million bottles of their world-renowned nootropic Alpha Brain. The nootropic is filled with clinically studied ingredients that help you with your focus and your memory and they are so confident you're going to love it that it comes with a no questions asked money back guarantee. Try Alpha Brain today by using this link onit.com forward slash upflip and get up to 30% off your bottle of Alpha Brain. Again, that is onnit.com forward slash upflip and enjoy. For somebody watching us right now and is struggling to get new customers, what would you tell them? And you can tell them yeah. on what they can do right now or change in their business. Yeah, so one thing you're gonna wanna do is definitely hop on a load board. I use that board. There's a bunch of different load boards I could go on and on. We use the truckstop.com. That is one of my favorites if you're for any freight you're gonna haul, so it's truckstop. And I think if you just get on there, and uh, you start looking for brokers to haul for, that's gonna be your first step and then start calling around. You find out if there's a cold storage facility, anyone who makes like wine around your area, beer producers, potato haulers, or depend on what you obviously haul, of course, that mm -hmm. can change. But even if you go hit up auctions and say, hey, I wanna haul your cars with our flatbed, you know, do it. So uh, Awesome. What can you tell me about building a relationship with brokers? Is there any, any uniqueness to just building a really strong one? I mean, especially yeah. as a new one. Right? Yeah, a new business. I have a really strong relationship with this brokerage out in uh, uh, Oregon and we haul actually loads for them every single week. So we do haul their grocery outlet uh, route that they have because uh, a lot of companies like to go through brokers. So it's the risk mitigation for right. having a trucking company directly. So they go through these brokers. And so just started by doing one load and I was like, hey, could this be a possibility? Do you have this often? He's like, yeah, like all, every, uh, twice a week. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we got a truck here twice a week. What dates? Worked out the same thing. We just started doing it and doing it and doing it. And came to the point where now they send me like the load confirmation, I don't even message them. They just well, send me the load confirmation every week. They so. expect you to be yep. there. They yep. know you'll be there. Yep, exactly. You built that reputation. Yeah. That's pretty cool. In terms of revenue, Mikhail, what is it today and what are the typical margins? Yeah, so right now our revenue a month is anywhere from 75 to 120,000 when all the trucks are running. Profit We're margin is about 30%. So for me, right now, we're hitting a little bit lower revenue area because it's not harvest yet. So we kind of have a slowdown mm -hmm. in the summer. How much of it are you putting back in in terms of revenue back all, in the business? Almost 100% wow. just because I, I want to have as much trucks as possible. And I have my uh, construction business that's pretty much paying me personally. So gotcha. I'm not struggling there with the personal side of things without get, having trucking paying, but it's nice because when we have all that uh, money built back in, then we're just able to buy new equipment, new trailers, hire more drivers, and then mm -hmm. my goal is just to have a super big fleet, mega fleet. Okay. So. In terms of your revenue that you mentioned, how many jobs uh, a month typically do you have to do? Yeah. Running what? Four trucks, right? Yeah, so four trucks. To reach that revenue. I should actually say my revenue is off because I try to hit at least $30,000 a, a week with, mm -hmm. with four trucks. So sometimes we're in the 120000 margin usually. Um, but like I said, with the three, two to three trucks, the 75, 85,000 margin with that, you're going to be wanting to run at least three loads per truck a week, gotcha. depending on the length. Sometimes you go to Florida and that's right. just already a 10, $12,000 week, just going from here to Florida. Yeah. Um, so it really just really depends on the type of freight, but I'd say you're going to be wanting to do with one truck to pay yourself back would probably want to be three three loads a week roughly if you're running regional mm -hmm. just because you want to be i'd say grossing at least ten thousand dollars or eight to ten thousand dollars per truck so that's okay. kind of my my margins i like to keep when you look for drivers to hire what do you look for i definitely say that an interview is not going to tell you the um the full story a lot of people will be like hey let's just do an interview whatever and then we'll we'll do maybe a drive test no i asked them hey i want to take them to lunch i want to mm -hmm. see if they want to go to dinner I'll, I'll say hey bring your wife or bring your kids or whoever i'll, I'll buy you guys food because i want to talk Why to them think that's better or uh, the reason i say that is because you really get to see who they are around mm -hmm. other people and then you know with yourself and so you just talk and i get to really know them and then say hey I feel comfortable with you driving my truck and give them a shot. What platforms would you go to to see who's... Facebook is so crazy because you can literally do anything. Facebook again. Yeah, Facebook. Facebook yeah. again. Facebook. All right, so even to find drivers, yeah. that's a place There's, there's where... actually group chats for finding drivers. So CDL drivers looking for work is a popular one and I posted there. But yeah, so I, I go on Facebook. Um, I've even used Instagram and it's worked. I don't really like posting to job sites. I've really never okay. had to. Yeah, whatever so works for I, you. Social media has always been such a good tool and I've been successful with it. Most of your drivers are local, right? Yeah. Or all of them. I have uh, one driver that lives an hour, about an hour out, and then I have all my other drivers live in town. Is there anything important to, to mention on 
on uh, how that works. I mean, I, I'm new yeah. to it too, so I'm yeah. like, is, is that always the case for like if a trucking company yeah. exists in Pasco, and every driver is going to be most likely from here? I could actually have a driver live in California. I could have them live in Las Vegas. I could have them so live in Texas. No... Yeah, they could All take right. the truck home as long as it comes in here at least once or twice a month, so we can just have the service mechanics check it out. I like getting my inspections done pretty often. So, do you I, think you're going to have that at some point, or are you going to focus on just I already had drivers talking about uh, living out in Arizona and working out there, and I eventually have a goal for getting a warehouse out in Arizona, All right. Phoenix area. So. So when somebody just gets started, when you did, how did you build brand awareness, right? Yeah. What did I, you do specifically? Tell us the Getting steps. my logos from my uh, company that did my digital marketing, they made my logos, my banners, variations. Pretty easy to do. So I went to go to Lonnie Signs, which is a sign shop out here in Pasco. They did all my signs on my trucks. It was a huge thing. Then I just started advertising heavily with the logos, posted them all over on social media, tried to make one social post a day. Again, right? And from social media, it just kind of took off. And that's when I, TikTok, my girlfriend kept saying, you need to start making TikToks. You'd go viral. And I did like three videos, one point three million views and I was like, oh that's my insane. gosh. So that's insane. So you didn't off. really spend a lot of money on getting your brand awareness. No, you I just, think did the just the logos. The I think I spent about uh, six hundred total, maybe just getting everything, all my logos, copyrights done, everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Wow. So with the rising fuel costs and everything else, right? As a business yeah. owner, what are your suggestions to manage the, the fuel costs? Yeah. What ways and tricks to get the most amount of discounts? I think right now is definitely the most important time to reinvest in your business and your company. Save all the money you got for your business besides what you got to pay yourself to mm -hmm. you know, be stable. But uh, I'd say, yeah, definitely investing more in your company and kind of waiting it out because it is going to go down eventually. Fuel card programs are best. I use, a, I have an A to B card is what it's called. A to B, you get universal discounts and you can manage all your drivers on there, all, all of that. And it's, when you say universal, like any gas station, you get yeah. a discount? Yep, yep. Interesting. How does station. that work? What is the discount? Is it substantial or is it just minuscule? It like, depends. It's, it's all variable. Anywhere from 20 cents to 70 cents. Wow. Yeah, the so, 70 yeah. cents makes a difference. Yeah, it does. Definitely. Okay. 100%. Were there any barriers to uh, entry being 19 years old? I mean, how did they look at you? Like, Yo, you want to start a trucking business? 100%. My first insurance quote with me driving, it was like 57000 a year. And, Whoa. and I was starting out, you know, I'm putting all my money in my truck, my trailer, yeah. my insurance. That's now 57000 a year. Man, that's my whole capital. And they wanted like a 20% down payment. So gotcha. That's when I was like kind of getting discouraged at first. And then that's when I started just, I posted on a trucking chat like, hey, I'm just kind of stuck. I'm probably, and the cheapest I found was 38,000. And then I had a dude call me from Florida and he was like, you're talking about the truck. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The truck for the insurance and the liability and all that. And he was like, hey, I'll guarantee you save you money. He's like, let me do my magic. So I hit up him in Florida, um, my first agent, and then he, you know, helped out a lot, so. Okay, any other tips and tricks when it comes to just getting into trucking with regards to insurance for those watching? What else have you learned that yeah. you're like, do this, do this, or don't do that? What comes to mind? 100%, so first thing is, uh, for me, I wasn't gonna be the primary driver. I'm actually not on my insurance as a driver because of how expensive it is to insure me. That makes I'm, sense. I'm put on like a, my, my flatbed, a mm -hmm. 350. I'd say first get your drivers that have more than two years of experience. Um, 100% needed is two years of experience one. for your drivers. Second would be make sure that your agency is local. I recommend having a local That's agency. Good. Another thing would be I'd say shop around and actually put insurance agencies to get like against each other because they want you to spend the most money. But if you find the right one, they're gonna save you the most money and they're not really gonna care about hey I got this guy to buy a hundred thousand dollar policy. Right. They so, want your business yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. Right, that's you just what they're gotta doing. Find, you just got to find the right one. Okay. <laughs> this is the reefer, right? Yep. This I is remember you mentioned this trailer. is your favorite uh, thing to haul. Why yeah. is it? Is it because of the profit margins? So or? definitely the, yeah, the profit margins and the availability. Uh, reefer freight is huge in Washington because we have lamb, and potatoes. We have eggs out here. We mm. have all these grocery stores, dairy products. So dairy gold is huge. And so we just, whatever it is, that needs refrigeration, which is mostly food. We can haul it, and we've been really successful at it with our first truck. That's what I started with was a uh, reefer. Do you want to get more? Is that the idea yeah, for yeah. scaling the get, business? Get okay. more reefers and flatbeds is the goal. So uh, those are my two favorite freight. Right now, flatbed freight is the one that's going highest uh, freight rate-wise, the highest value because of... Uh, the flatbed. Yeah, but they fluctuate all the time. Reefer is really strong in, uh, like I said, August through uh, December, and then January as well. So is Van because mm -hmm. then everyone's kind of wanting to get their Amazon products, their Christmas toys, and gotcha. then flatbed. That stays busy all through the summer and the spring because people are always going to need wood, lumber, and whatever they need. You that know, makes to sense. What do we got here right now? Do you actually haul with this thing? Yes. Or is this more of a business so commuter? We have a gooseneck in there right now. It's used for commuting and we actually, we transport a lot of uh, equipment and stuff like that. So for this, we have a gooseneck in our flatbed. We haul anything from cars, uh, piping, scrap metal, 
the whole nine yards really with it so and this is the trailer no no this is just a secondary trailer we this is gotcha. a tow trailer i got it for our towing division and you said the gooseneck right that's the yeah. much bigger one how many cars can you handle uh that? the gooseneck this hauls the gooseneck trailer uh, up to three cars but then that? it's 40 feet of space where you could stack that thing at 11 feet high so <laughs> nice know. what did you pay for it i paid this guy a little bit more than i should have sixty-seven thousand. i negotiated a bit off of it they were wanting way more than it, it was worth but got it for that and we ended up getting a flatbed already had drivers a team ready to go so i have a team that that drives this and a reefer so they kind of interval back and forth okay and then uh, we use it to haul cars and then our gooseneck we just go all over the country we've been to florida been to oklahoma texas yeah. california you name it yeah your tires are running uh you know they're getting there yeah <laughs> looks like you're, you're using it for what it's meant to be let's talk about truck storage yeah you know, where are you at here? You're well, we're here just at a port, open. Port, port facility. Uh, I know the family, they gave me the opportunity to park here. They have loads. I recommend highly getting an enclosed lot. The thing is that where we live out here, it's so truck heavy that finding an enclosed lot is almost impossible. What would it cost to store it then if it wasn't a deal that you have, right? You yeah. know this family you and so on. You can expect for a truck and trailer combo to be anywhere from about 100 a month to 200 a month. That's like a rough average and that's just for parking a truck and trailer. The idea obviously is, right? That the truck shouldn't be parked too much. It needs yeah. to be on the road making yeah, you money. 100%. So, so yeah. how often out of the month do you think the trucks sit here for you specifically? One or two of the trucks that come, like this guy and the two Freightliners, they come in and out uh, in, in our local routes. Mm -hmm. So they'll run anywhere around town. And then the other one's going back and forth from Seattle, Spokane, sometimes Oregon. So they'll be back every other night or every two nights or something like that. So I have them here quite often, but then my other trucks, they probably come here maybe twice a month max Got so it. okay yeah. well i'm excited if you don't mind to take a spin on one of your trucks do you mind if we do that i think i trust you all right let's do it all right you guys let's go for a spin my first time driving a semi and we'll continue asking amazing questions to mikhail who's already inside let's do it all right mikhail teach me how to start this cool. uh, monster here you got your key on the very left over right. there turn that all the way to the right do we do any pre-start checklist or is it pretty straightforward no, pretty straightforward on this guy we would usually do an outside inspection but today because i just to a flew a plane yesterday and you have like a whole checklist yeah. of things before you can hit the yeah hit the road and then let it sit on for uh, about five seconds why mm -hmm. is that what do we wait you want to wait for the glow plugs to warm up um and then there's a start button right there that push button do i hold it until it yep i hear it running it. and just hold it uh-huh let go perfect that right was there. easy press both pedals both pedals push in the clutch, then grab this, and then uh, it's on the bottom. There's a yep. little lever, and then pull it to drive right there. Uh, uh, one more up. <laughs> there you go. And then slowly release the clutch. Obviously, keep the brakes on. Keep the brakes off. Up. And then slowly release clutch. And then gas her up. Let her go. And you don't have to touch the clutch anymore unless That's you it? stop. Yeah. You know what? I think I'm gonna drop the host thing on YouTube and uh, become a truck driver. But we're hiring. Are you? <laughs> Did you write a business plan when you started the trucking business? Yeah, I had a little printed out one that I, just I one made. Page? And whatnot. Yeah, it was just one, one general page that had a breakdown of like just starting, really just starting. What's three important parts on that piece of paper that you um, think three, every business plan should have? Three important parts of the business plan is that you the, had on there, number yeah. one is I'd say is the financing, always financing. Where do you get the money? Yeah, where are you going to get the money and how much are you going to spend of it? Mm -hmm. And then second off is what is your first plan of attack? How are you going to get the first? How are you going to get the first amount of money? And then the third time is how are you going to sustain the money? Right. Uh, how do you keep it going? So I think those are the three important parts: is you know, start, get it going, keep it going. Gotcha. So. How do you manage your work-life balance? I mean, what other things do you yeah. do? And I like I like traveling. So like we went to Mexico this year like four times. What else do you do? Yeah, I like flying. So pilot. So I like have my That's license so cool. and whatnot. And so I like uh, you know. Uh, Go you ahead have your and own fly. plane? No, not yet. <laughs> Someday though. Um, but I have, I have friends that fly and then I do videography and photography and that's kind of, I make money from it, but it's kind of like a fun type of business Passion where you can thing. really be passionate about it and passionate about other things I do, but there's the difference between actually doing the work and right. having that, uh, you know, that mindset where you know you're like, okay, the pressure is not all the way on there, but mm -hmm. you know, shooting can be very, very stressful sometimes, but it's very fun, so I love doing it. I bet, that's, that's cool. Look, if you guys wanna hear more advice from Mikael, we interviewed him on our podcast. Check it out on upflip.com forward slash podcast. I believe it's episode 28. So for somebody looking uh, to buy their first truck, you mentioned Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. What other places can people go to to you know vet the possible trucks? What yeah. should they look for? Obviously there's different kind of freight, right? 
Yeah. So what else can we touch on that and add value? So I'd say Facebook Marketplace is honestly one of the best selling selling sites. I'm surprised. For, for, for anything trucks. really. Yeah, uh, trucks and reefer, I've got everything I have off Facebook Marketplace. Wow. Another good one is Craigslist because a lot of right. older guys are, Not surprised there. Are, posting, okay. are posting their trucks on Craigslist because that's what they're used to. Usually 19 year olds aren't really in the trucking industry. So usually, but, um, <laughs> hopefully that'll change after this yes, video. I hope so. Like, what do you look for? Like I'm, so, I'm brand new, yeah. I did some research, I want to buy my first truck. What are, what are the key components, Mikhail, to look for to not get screwed, essentially? Yeah, so first thing, obviously, turn it on, see how it sounds. Um, when we hop in a truck, you want to you wanna make sure that the, igni the ignition starts up. Yeah, and then also come look at the tires. You can see where the wear is because tires are very expensive. Obviously, these ones have been wear down quite a bit. These are the inner duals on the front. These are the power drives. Is that pretty drives. common or is yes. that just a lineman off? Uh, no, pretty common with these trucks, especially with the weight being on the front. There's a bunch of factors that can affect that. Um, but yeah, mostly mostly weight and also alignment. But right. then another thing is come check the plate, pull the fifth wheel and see if all the mechanisms are working. Uh, you could check all the transmission, make sure that <laughs> everything's kind of lubed up and the gears, uh, brakes, you can do your brake test and see how many brakes they got. And then just see if you just see anything out of normal. Obviously this is my beat truck. Tires aren't as important when buying a truck because you can always throw yeah. that in a nego negotiation. I actually prefer getting a truck that needs a little bit of work mm -hmm. because then that's where your negotiation comes in. I got two really good mechanics and they come in and help out. Spruce and they're, and they're good, good price and they're well worth it, so. How many employees do you have? Because you said you're running five trucks. So how many yeah, total employees? I currently have uh, seven. And so I have uh, four four drivers and then, uh, well, five, but the part-timer. Yep. And so full-time employees, though, about six and then seven total. And so we have uh, two dispatchers and uh, my girlfriend, she does uh, personal assistant work and stuff like that. And they're employees of your company. They're yeah. not subcontractors or yep, anything. Yep. Uh, anything you want to highlight in terms of how the pay is structured? Any tips, yeah. tricks, benefits? I do, that... I do by mileage, anywhere from starting from 50 to 70 cents a mile. So I make sure I pay them well. So I have a driver making up to like 2800 3200 a week. So Just by driving yeah. your truck? Yeah. Yep. Not having to worry about maintenance of the truck? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So that's, that's not bad. So yeah, they make some pretty good money sometimes with uh, with driving. And there's other times where, you know, you might do a shorter mile a week or a shorter run and, you know, could pay 1200 or so or, you know, 800 depending on just really how much you drive. Yeah. So if you, the more you want to drive, the more you make kind of deal. So there's a lot of regulations for the trucking business, right? Yes. 100%. Give us the top three regulatory things that you have to stay on top of monthly, yearly. Yeah. One is driver e-logs, ELDs, making sure your drivers are staying in compliance with their hours. And then another thing is making sure that you keep uh, all your receipts, all everything for both DOR and IRS is because we get tax deductions with an MC number. I think the last thing is definitely insurance. Your insurance has to be like keen perfectly for what you're hauling. All the freight has to be perfectly insured or else wow. you can get a big violation if your insurance was off. When do you want to get to 100 trucks? 100 trucks? I was actually talking to the guy at a dinner. I was saying, uh, I think in about I think seven to eight years, I could have 100 trucks. Nice, is that really your goal for yeah. Sant Lines? Yeah. You want I, to grow that big? I think I would, I think 1,000 trucks is like my main, 1,000 reefers, having 1,000 refrigeration units wow. in the fleet and then having a total I think like my main goal would be having like 10,000 trucks total, uh, box trucks, flatbeds, reefers. 10,000? Yeah. See, this guy's thinking big. What do you see happening with these diesel? They're not going nowhere. Diesel you is don't just, think so? you can't outperform a diesel. And yeah, it feels Tesla expensive. Truck. So even with the Tesla truck, there's a, they've never had one in real operation. And there's been not videos yet. now getting leaked about uh, aut autonomous trucks crashing and stuff like that. So I, I don't think- Still uh, a ways out, I think, before- very, I think we're about like, honestly being realistic, about 40 years out before we get to an actual electric trucking uh, community. Mm -hmm. And uh, But overall, when that happens, you just gotta evolve with Ship it. Ship them can't be, yep. you can't be You yep. can't be afraid of it. Hey, if they make electric trucks run it as efficient as a diesel, right. I'm all for it. So, Absolutely. You know? What are some challenges that you're faced with, you know, as a truck driver? What, give me a scenario. Yeah, so, I mean, for instance, we had a really tough month in April. You know, like I talked about, uh, breakdowns are always a, always a thing. Right. Uh, with our case, we had a, a large frozen load of potatoes worth over $100,000, and we had a reefer that ended up having six or four to six breakdowns that month, and it was all for one issue that could have been fix in one go but no one really knew what they were talking about and we finally came to our, our thermal king here in pasco they got us done right and then our blower motor went out and that's when we really felt it because we were losing temperature we're in hot texas weather Jeez, so you almost lost a hundred thousand yeah, dollars of potatoes but luckily my reefer held at like positive 10 degrees so it was still frozen as can be and it, it really was a was a work of a miracle there so 
Wow. Yeah, that was definitely a hard hard thing to go with uh, running the business and, you know, for my driver as well because I was having him rush to Dallas from another small town in Texas and we were able to find Man. the part and got it fixed. That'd be a lot of french fries yeah. destroyed. I'd be disappointed. A lot of McDonald's <laughs> would be upset with us. How do you scale a trucking business yeah. and you know increase its revenue? Give First thing, obviously, is uh, getting getting loads and getting you know more customers. And and I think it's getting one truck, set a goal, make sure you're hitting that. Once you start hitting that, and you see that profit come in, and you have enough money in your account, yeah. go buy a new truck. As soon as you can afford a new truck, no, get I it. can't go spend it on a Ferrari or something. That you want, but rather get a truck. So truck will make you money. Ferrari depreciates. So true. you know, I'd say uh, go uh, go get a go get a new truck as soon as you got that money, and uh, then start building from there. And then the more trucks you get, actually, the more customers will start coming to you, which mm -hmm. is kind of a weird thing. People just start realizing once you start getting more trucks, you start moving around. Yeah. They'll start seeing your logos. Nice to have that. How important is like customer experience, obviously reliability yeah. in that whole process, right? Because it's not super, just trucks and stuff. Super big. Um, you, your trucking company literally relies on your reliability to pick and deliver a load. Right. And so that's... What's the secret to that? And the secret to that is just making sure you have good drivers, good reliable drivers, good reliable trucks, good maintenance plan, and a good scheduling and knowing how the hours of operation work with an ELD, which is just a device that limits your hours. Drivers only get 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Then they can work seven days, 60 hour schedules, or they can work eight days, 70 hour schedules. And so you just wanna make sure that time management is, is super keen with trucking. And it sucks because it feels like sometimes trucking companies are the ones that get pinned because there's the brokers that give out loads to the companies from the client, and then there's clients that are just expected to be done. And so then the trucking company is the end result of, hey, it's all on you, and that's the pressure's on, you know? But I, I really do like it, and I think that once you get that down and you realize how the industry works, you're just gonna keep rolling and keep going. Let's talk about buying or leasing a truck when you get started. You didn't do that, no, right? No, I bought, I bought so my own. So can you share what you think, just um, at least your opinion? I'd say, I'd say leasing is good is if you can get one, but it's like a six month waiting list right now to even get a lease truck. That so one. yeah, so it's gonna put a, a time crunch on your business. And then on top of that, you actually don't own that truck. You're spending money on the truck that's not even gonna be yours, which I see why they cover the maintenance, whatever, and you could switch out trucks if you ever have a breakdown. But I recommend buying over leasing, but I think leasing is a good option if you're wanting to just try out the industry before you really that's go a dump point. a bunch of money in, Yeah, so. before you really commit to the business yeah. like you did. So you have other businesses as well. What do you use to manage your workflow? Not just on the yeah. trucking side, the construction side. I want to highlight sort of how you make that work yeah, without so going crazy. A big thing is QuickBooks. Uh, I have my uh, my brother who is a banker. He manages all the finances, does all the bookkeeping. We have weekly calls and just go over everything and whatnot. And then another big thing is just, you have to be organized digitally. So I have like contacts that are all saved. If it's for construction, that's in their company notes or anything on their contact notes. Mm -hmm. So I could just search construction and I have like all my contacts Everybody for construction yeah. come there. And then I also use a thing called Jobber and that helps me for construction. We know Jobber, yeah. So Jobber is uh, what I use for uh, construction and then uh, I have on my computer both my computers the iPad for dispatching and then the my personal laptop I have a file section for each truck when it comes to trucking on where I put my documents the load bills uh, receipts all of that so expenses is all categorized and everything's in its own little file system let me follow up with this question so we have somebody watching they have one truck they, they do their finances they do yeah. their track and they do their dispatch whatever the case may be right mm -hmm. at which point what would be the first one or two things that you need to uh, give over to somebody else to then you know run your business more smoothly, right? Instead of being a jack of all trades and trying to I'd do everything. Say, I'd say uh, definitely dispatch and fleet management is the one thing when you start growing. But if you're doing one truck, one or two, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say because I was a, a super. I, I'm even able to manage with all the stuff I do right now. I could dispatch four trucks over alone too. Oh, okay. It's not it's not as efficient, so I I don't, but um, I, I can, and so. I'd say the first thing would be throw over your fleet management and dispatching to somebody else. And then uh, finances is really the last thing you want to do because luckily I got my brother a part of my team and right. so I really trust him. But you could really get screwed up by trusting somebody with your finances and then uh, definitely uh, go see a CPA for all your taxes. Go go get an attorney for contracts, employment contracts. Just have those people in your in your circle and I think after that you'll, you'll kind of get the rest of the way. But a fleet manager is like the number one I think uh, that you should source out once you uh, get to that point. He's yeah. got a private pilot license at 17. He's got multiple businesses at 19. He's got plans to do yeah. a lot more. And I'm like, this. there's got to be a secret sauce to this. My, or, or what I don't is know. It? My, my dad, he did had a landscaping company when he was young, like younger in high school and did, started a little business when uh, he was in, uh, in high school and just did that and made all his money doing that. And then he got into other things. And my brother had a little lawn care business so as well. So it's just kind and of I one just, thing after another. And I just took on to it. And then that's all I want to do. So that's just awesome. self-employment, so. Okay.
What's next for Sant Lines for the next think, five years? Uh, Give us a quick next, snapshot. Next five years is keep buying trucks and evolving and maybe get in a few more extra freights. I think we're going to get into heavy haul, haul in bigger excavators and equipment and just keep killing it. Trying to, cool. uh, I think our five year goal for revenue and I last spoke with my brother is going to be about like 25, 30 million. So, wow, that's pretty ambitious. I'm do it, but so. I have no doubt he can do it. <laughs> All right, Mikael, well, this has been fun. Hey, thank thank you. you. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. Well, that's a wrap with Sant Lines. The owner is Mikael. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you were inspired by everything he's doing, everything he's shared with you. I'm sure he's happy. If you reach out via comments, he'll respond. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take a second to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of our videos we do for you. Thank you.